Hi guys, welcome to Graceful Beauty. My name is Sherry and tonight I'm going to film for you my evening skincare routine. Now my routine changes pretty frequently, but this is the steps that I'm using right now. Now bear with me because I do live in a very small condo with just a one bathroom, just me and my husband, but we do live right on the beach and so I'm not complaining because we definitely live in paradise so I can deal with a smaller bathroom. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove my makeup. Now I like to do the two-step cleanse, the first part being with an oil, and of course the second step with some sort of a face cleanser. So the oil that I'm currently using right now is by DHC, it's their deep cleansing oil. This is infused with olive oil and vitamin E, and this is a really nice cleanser because it doesn't leave an oil slick on your face afterwards. After you rinse it with water, it completely dissolves and your face feels soft and there's no greasy residue or anything. Now I suppose you probably could use this as your only step, but I don't like to do that. I like to get it all off and use a face cleanser afterwards. So I use about two pumps and I put it in my hand and it literally just looks like olive oil. There's not really much of a scent but it does have a smidge of rosemary extract that is one of the very last ingredients so and it doesn't irritate my skin. So I just rub this all around and I even get it on my eyes and now I'm gonna rinse it off. So as you can see, this DHC cleansing oil pretty much got off all of my makeup, but I'm going to go one step further and do a second cleanse just to make sure it's all fully removed. Now just for a moment, I wanna turn this light down because I think that these lights are great and they make your skin look great and they're perfect for viewing purposes, but I give honest reviews and I want you guys to see the real me and you're gonna see that when I turn this light down, my skin does not look like this. So this is the real me, what I really look like. And now you can see all of my hyperpigmentation, the melasma, and there's still some acne scarring here. But you know, everybody likes to film with the lighting because of course it just looks better. So um, I'm going to turn it back up, but I just want you guys to see what's truly underneath my makeup. So after I've done the first step of the oil cleanse to remove all of my makeup, the second step I like to do is wash my face with some sort of skin cleanser. Now I normally use the CeraVe um, for normal to oily skin, their foaming facial cleanser, but it has parabens in it and so I've been trying to find something different and I like all of these products, IS Clinical, so I like the products in this uh, brand, so I thought I would try their cleansing complex. And this says it's resurfacing, anti-blemish, and deep cleansing. And it's a clear, lightweight cleansing gel, and it says it's supposed to remove all of your makeup. Now, I'm not sure if I love this yet. I still love my CeraVe Foaming Face Cleanser, but I use this sometimes just with my fingers, and a couple times a week I like to use my Clarisonic, and tonight I am gonna use my Clarisonic. I think this is the Sensitive Skin brush, but I'm not real sure. I bought a pack of, I think, four or five of them, and it had a bunch of different brushes. So what I do is I just put a little bit of this IS Clinical Cleansing Gel on my Clarisonic, Turn it on, and I just start to cleanse. Now I used to do this real hard <laughs> with my Clarisonic, and then I realized, yikes, that's not the way you're supposed to use it. So I just try to gently go across my face without tugging it, without pulling it, and sometimes I'll go in light circles, but I am not putting pressure. I used to smash it so hard, and you know, it's just not good. Get around your nose really well. And this comes apart too, if you wanted to take it apart to get better access to all the cracks and crevices. And I do my neck. See? This is what's left over. So even though the oil did a great job, 
Clarisonic, it like gets down into your pores and gets it all out. So I'm just gonna rinse this off. So now my face is clean and it feels really clean. It feels extremely soft. That's one thing that I do really like about this IS Clinical Cleansing Complex is your skin doesn't feel cracking or dry or dehydrated as some cleansers will do. Now the next step is not something that you have to do, but it's just something that I like to do and it's toning my face. I like to use the Derma E. It's the anti-wrinkle, it's vitamin A and glycolic acid. I don't really think it has a whole lot of glycolic in it. I'm not sure what the pH is or what the concentration is, but I am able to use this on the same night that I use Retin-A. And typically when you use Retin-A, during the day, that night, whatever, do not use glycolic acid when you're about to use Retin-A because that's just too much for your skin. So what I do is I just put a little bit on a cotton pad. I also have some of these that have like the exfoliating beads on one side, but these don't. These are just nice and smooth. And I just wipe it on my face. And I try to wipe gentle. I know sometimes I get a little carried away, but I'm trying not to make my wrinkles get any deeper. And do my neck. And look, there's still something on the cotton pad. Now it's not really makeup. It's probably just this brown hair coloring stuff, the temporary hair coloring that I put on because it, I try to get it all off if I'm not washing my hair at night because I don't want to get it on my pillow. See, that's not my makeup. That's the temporary hair color. Now. Tonight, I'm going to be using Retin-A, so my skincare steps will totally be different tonight than they are on the usual nights throughout the week. So tonight, I'm going to put my serums on and my eye cream on first before I do my Retin-A. And I also let my skin dry naturally, probably for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. They say you're supposed to with Retin-A because if you put Retin-A on your skin when it's wet, I don't know, I guess it absorbs too much and can cause skin sensitivity. I used to use Retin-A around five times a week, but now I'm trying a few different things in my skincare routine, but I still try to work it in at least once or twice a week. And I probably will go back to doing it at least five times a week here in the near future. So the serum I'm gonna use tonight is by Paula's Choice. It's the Resist Ultra Light Super Antioxidant Concentrate Serum. This has some really great ingredients in it, tons of antioxidants, it has hyaluronic acid, resveratrol, and niacinamide, and lots of other really, really good stuff. I love this. I think I used this, the not the ultra light one, but the one for normal to dry skin, I think. I used it five or six years ago, maybe, and I don't know, I thought it was too oily. And then I was on their website a few weeks ago and I realized that they did have uh, an ultra light one. So I thought, hey, why not get it and see if it works? And I love it. You can use it morning and evening and it just goes on so silky smooth and makes my face feel so soft afterwards. And again, it's chock full of all kinds of really awesome ingredients. So I shake it up first to make sure everything is mixed. I wish this came in like a little pump applicator so I could control how much is coming out, but I just put a few drops. I'll just do four drops, five, whatever that is. And so see, it's just a runny, has like a light yellow tint to it, and it's like a gel. And I just put it all over my face. And I try to just press it in. Like I said, sometimes I get crazy and I'm just rubbing and rubbing. And you know, as we get older, I'm trying to get better with not rubbing and manipulating my skin too much. So I just press it all in there. Doesn't burn my eyes, doesn't irritate my face. It just feels so great afterwards. I'm gonna put a little bit more on. Oops, that's a lot more because I need to get my neck and my chest. And I'm just gonna rub it in lightly here. 
and I do normally bring it all the way down. The next product I like to use is something that a lot of experts say you don't need, but it's eye cream. And I like to use an eye cream morning and night. This is one by Elastin Skincare, and the reason I like to use an eye cream morning and night is because I don't always use a face moisturizer. So that's why a lot of uh, beauty experts say you don't need an eye cream because they say your face moisturizer is enough. So that's why I add it to my skincare step because I also want extra moisturization around my eyes for the little wrinkles and the crepiness that I get. This is one that most of you probably have never heard of. I got this. Uh, recommended to me by one of my girlfriends who sees a dermatologist and they said it was really great. I'm not not liking it. I just don't notice anything amazing with it. It was maybe around a hundred bucks which is a lot for an eye cream but you know I'm willing to spend whatever to get the wrinkles gone and uh, to make my eyes look more youthful. So this is full of a bunch of peptides, niacinamide, and a bunch of other crazy ingredients that I cannot even pronounce, but it's supposed to be really amazing. And I've only purchased this one time. It's pretty much empty, so I'm not even able to pump any out because it's gone. Well, there's a little bit, but I'm going to open this up. This is one of those airless pumps, and there's a smidgy left in there, so I'm going to take a clean Q-tip and I'm going to get that out and then put that on my hand. And that's actually even a little bit more than what I would normally even use. So I'm just going to take my ring finger and I like to dab it on there. And then I just like to rub it very gently Again, sometimes I get carried away and I'm pulling and tugging and you know, you really just don't want to do that, especially around the delicate eye area. So Now that my skin is completely dry, it's definitely been well over 20 minutes, it's time for me to put on my Retin-A. I use the 0.1% Retin-A and this one looks a little scary because it has been in my skincare bucket, but it still works the same. And something I also started using again about a week ago is the hydroquinone. This is one that I think I got in Spain actually. And I have used hydroquinone off and on for maybe about 10 years, but I will go years and years and years and years without using it because I read so many things that say, oh, it's so bad for your liver, and then I read other things and speak to other dermatologists that say, look, you're only putting it on your face, you're not covering it on your whole body, and, uh, you know, the effects, the negative effects that your liver can experience are pretty minimal. So, you know, I am really struggling with all of my hyperpigmentation and my melasma, and I'm just going to show you again a little bit closer with this light down so you can see how dark it really is. So again, you know, I know you can see it with makeup and everything on, but without makeup, I don't leave the house without makeup because this is just so dark on my face. But I'm going to turn the light back up. So what I do is I mix the hydroquinone with the Retin-A. I'm just gonna do like a little pea size of the hydroquinone. And I do a little pea size of the Retin-A. That actually looks like too much, but I'm gonna bring this down my neck and chest also. So I just mix it together and then I just put it all over my face. And I'm going to bring it down my neck and on my chest. And then I'm just going to lightly rub it in. And again, I don't use my Retin-A every night or even five times a week like I used to. I stopped because I wanted to try out some other skincare products. You know, Retin-A is supposed to help you so that you don't get acne, and I still get acne even if I'm using it. I am on the high strength of Retin-A because I've used it for years, probably 
I don't know, 15 years, 20 years, but I've used it off and on. And, you know, I'll stop for years, even with the Retin-A, and then go back to it. And I even put it on my eyelids. I just pat it in, and I put it around my eyes. And I try not to get it, like, in the cracks here or in the cracks here too much, because then I hate when you get the dry, peeling skin. Then I just let this completely soak in, and sometimes I will just go to bed with just this being my final two steps. And then other times I want to layer on some moisturizer afterwards. Now, sometimes I'll even just put the Retin-A straight on my cleansed skin and I won't use uh, any serums or toners or anything like that, but it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. I'm in. Sometimes I might do a moisturizer prior to the Retin-A and other times I'll just do a moisturizer after the Retin-A or none at all. It just totally depends. But right now this is what I'm doing and I'm trying to only use this Retin-A um, once or twice a week, but I'm trying to do the hydroquinone. I know I really should be doing it um, every night, but it's just really difficult for me to do when there's so many other products I think might cure my melasma. I have noticed some lightening in the past when I have done um, the hydroquinone mix with, with the Retin-A, and I would do it for about three, maybe four months, and then I would stop for three to four months and then go back on. And I would notice a little lightening, but honestly not enough for me to be so serious about the skincare routine where I had to put it on every single night. But I'm going to try it again. I just started up about a week ago, and then I'm going to try gradually work my way up to doing it every single night. Even if I don't do the Retin-A every night, I'm going to really try to do the hydroquinone. And on days where I'm just hanging out at the house and I'm not wearing any makeup, I will use the hydroquinone in the morning, of course followed by a sunscreen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, this is just what I'm currently doing for my evening skincare routine, but it does change pretty frequently. And I'll do an updated video here in the near future. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I would love to hear from you. And again, I apologize for the small little space and having my face so close up in the camera. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. And if you did like this video, click the like button and give it a thumbs up.